A young man is sitting on the floor in a mechanical room. He has second-degree burns to his face, obvious signs of respiratory distress, and appears disoriented. He works for a local heating and air conditioning company and received a service call for a faulty boiler. For the past two hours, he was attempting to pinpoint the problem and was working on a valve when he was violently struck in the face and neck by superheated water vapor. He also sustained injuries to his airway. Paramedics are on the way. The nearest hospital is 30 minutes away, and aeromedical services are not available. Upon their arrival at the factory, a worker rushes to the paramedics and tells them that there was an explosion and a colleague was burned on the face and neck by superheated steam that blew out of a valve. The paramedics ask her where the accident victim is located in the facility and make sure the faulty equipment has been shut down before intervening to ensure their safety. She is then told to remain calm and step aside. Hello, sir. We are paramedics. Can you tell us what happened to you? Steam got on my face and got on my throat. Okay. The victim you tells the paramedics breathing? that he has trouble breathing, that he is short of breath. Okay. Can you open your mouth? While checking the inside of the mouth, the paramedic looks for signs of burns. He also informs the victim he's going to be put on oxygen. He then checks the victim for abnormal breathing sounds. He asks him to take deep breaths and immediately hear striders. Ten minutes after the arrival of the paramedics, the user is no longer able to speak and his respiratory capacity is rapidly decreasing. Sir, are you still with me? Try to talk to me. Okay, we're gonna put you down. Can you put the defibrillation pads on? Still has a pulse. Respiration seems ineffective. Can you prepare the resuscitation bag? The paramedics are still able to maintain adequate oxygenation by helping the user to breathe with a resuscitation bag. Sir, are you still with me? Okay, we have to leave for the hospital now. Reading is currently six per minute with a saturation of 85. We're going to intubate. Set me up with the eye gel while I pre-oxygenate him. To intubate with the eye gel, the paramedic must first choose the size of the eye gel according to the size of the patient and lubricate it, and then remove dentures or prostheses if necessary. Five minutes later, saturation is at 92, so the paramedic proceeds with intubation. The paramedic must place the user in the nose-up position or sniffer position. Then, press the end of the chin down. He must insert the eye gel into the mouth, pushing continuously but gently until a definite resistance is reached. Do not exert permanent force during insertion. Try to ventilate a few times to make sure the eye gel is functioning properly. Then, attach the eye gel to the face using the attachment braces. A nasogastric tube can be used if needed. It is important to lubricate the tube before insertion. Once in place, the suction can be activated for a few seconds. Finally, install the ventilation tools on the eye gel and start assisted ventilation. 
The mask ventilation is working well, so the paramedics are ready to evacuate the victim. Once in the ambulance, the paramedic in charge informs his partner that ventilation is still effective, so they are ready to leave for the hospital. He also asks her to inform the hospital that they are on their way. We arrived with a patient, a 30-year-old male with burns to his face, neck and airway. He's unconscious and currently intubated. His situation is deteriorating and will arrive in 10 minutes. Keep going, we'll be there in 10 minutes. Almost immediately after their departure, the paramedic saturation informs his partner of a sudden drop in the victim's him. saturation and that he and cannot and stabilize him. She immediately tells him that they are 10 minutes away from the hospital. Upon arrival at the emergency room, the paramedics immediately transfer the user to the stabilization room and report his condition to the attending physician.